This is an automatic pressure cooker. It doesn't really matter what brand you use, whether it be Ninja or Instant Pot. Um, I love them all and they're all, they all work pretty much the same and they're all pretty great. The reason why I really like mine is because it does such a good job of making dishes that would normally require you to stay in the kitchen for like a really long time, maybe even like an entire day and making it something that you can just set it and forget it. You can put all the things in here, let it do its thing, and just leave the house. In my opinion, that's the biggest strength of these things. Doesn't matter how many features it has, as long as it has a timed pressure cooker function, that's what makes these things beautiful. What I'm gonna use this to make today is called Superior Stock. Superior Stock is kind of like the special ingredient in a lot of Cantonese dishes. Imperial dishes like shark's fin soup, and bird's nest and lion's head meatballs, things that are known to be really luxurious in Cantonese cuisine, they all actually get their magic from superior stock. And it's kind of like the signature behind every really good chef's, I guess, flavor profile. Everyone has a different recipe for it, but either way, it's what makes a lot of dishes special. The reason why it's such a big deal is because it's notoriously hard to make and it takes a really long time, probably up to five or six hours and you can't leave the stove because you have to keep replenishing it with water or like letting it simmer. You just have to pay, or pay attention to it. Using this thing, you can take something that would normally require a chef a ton of time and energy to make into something you just toss into a pot and then you can just like let it do its thing. And at the end of the video, I will use that superior stock to make steamed eggs, which normally is a pretty simple thing, but when you use it with superior stock, it becomes something that is just like magically flavorful. So let's get started. These are the basic elements of a superior stock. We've got pork neck bones, a stewing hen, uh, we have Chinese salted pork. You could just use any kind of salted pork so long that it is not smoked unless you want that smoky flavor, in which case you can buy a smoked ham hock if you'd like. And this is a Chinese ham. It's called Jinhua ham. It's served, uh, you buy it by the slice, and it is uh, kind of like our answer to Iberico. It is a high quality ham that we use primarily for soups and flavoring stocks. The reason why we use a multitude of meats is because, well, in my case, uh, I also add beef tendon to mine, which adds like a very rich and luxurious thickness and mouthfeel to it. Also, more collagen in anything is always welcome. The pork neck bones is pretty much going to be the fav flavor base. I would normally parboil these, but for the sake of keeping it easy, I'm going to try to just see what happens when I put everything in and just like forget it. My theory is, is that even though the soup will taste perfectly fine, it might be a little cloudier than I'd like. Professionally speaking, I would like my stock to be crystal clear, but at home, who cares? A stewing hen is an older chicken that was used for egg laying. Meat chickens and egg laying chickens are, are normally different, but once the chicken has reached an age where it can no longer lay eggs, they go off and become stewing hens. And because of their age and because of their diet, their meat is extremely flavorful, but it is also really tough. It's way too tough to use, say, for like any kind of food where you would actually eat the chicken itself, roasting chicken, frying, it's not the same. But because they are so full of flavor, they are perfect to use in soups. And actually, if you can find like a stewing hen with like large meat portions, you could use sous vide to actually make those parts tent a little more tender and make that meat good enough to eat, but that's for a different video. The salt pork does exactly what it is. It is just a fatty source of salt, and this is going to be our source of deep, rich umami. On aromatics, so there are some other ingredients that you do put in the stock, like ginger and scallions, sometimes roasted ginger, sometimes roasted scallions, white pepper, um, maybe some spices, but because those compounds, at least in my mind, are so much more delicate, I feel like they kind of get lost in the pressure cooking process. So in a sense, this is kind of like a two-step thing where you cook all of these like really, really tough base ingredients first, strain it out, and then you simmer in your more delicate parts, your spices, your herbs, your aromatics, that kind of thing. At the end of the day, it still saves you a lot of time and a lot of effort because that part might be like 
20 to 30 minutes on the stove as opposed to like five hours on the stove. Um, totally worth it in my sense. And plus, then you can also add in like the seafood portion, which a lot of stocks use dried scallops and dried shrimp to add even more depth of flavor to their stocks. But you can't do that in this step because it just makes it really, really fishy. A flash poach of aromatics and shellfish at the end, but most of the work is done by this thing. Okay. <clears throat> This is three pounds of pork bone. One stewing hen. Eek. Beef tendon. Salt pork. and ham. Right, maybe I should cut this we'll cut this guy up a little bit so he fits better. Oh, excuse me. It's not what that is. Okay. There. Now she fits. And then you just top it all off with water. We'll do it to the maximum level for pressure cooker. There we go. And then we just turn it on. Pressure on high for Pressure on high for two hours. We'll do two hours and 45. Seal and how do you, how do you turn it on? There. And that's it. If you had made superior stock before, just by virtue of the fact that that's all it took is pretty amazing. But if you would consider like, this is the kind of thing that you would make like oxtail stew or a curry I've heard some people make jollof rice in this thing, feijoada also. Um, if you have any concept of how much time and effort all of those things take to make, but now it's something that you can just do this and then go about your day and go on with your life, like that's pretty incredible because those are really, really delicious, time consuming, comforting, celebratory dishes, but now it's just easy. Is it as good as like doing it from scratch? No, well, this is still from scratch, but is it as like delicious as doing it where you're like watching it the whole time? No, you do lose a little bit of the nuance, but you can still add that back in later as we will after this is done. Um, it really just serves to make your life easier. And if it's easier, you'll probably do it more and enjoy your favorite dishes more. So that's why I really like these things. It has been a few hours and now this is done. So we're just going to, uh, Oh wow, this is really good. Okay, so that is delicious. Um, we could just leave that as it is because it's got, it's really porky. It's got great depth of flavor and it has an amazing rich texture to it. But we are going to strain out the solids and then put it into a pot and then like give it a little nuance via some spices as well as a little bit of and this part's totally optional, some dried scallops and some shrimp. That will give like, that will just take that complexity and umaminess to like a completely different level. It does look a little scary right now cause it's a little red, but honestly, like this is fine. This is just the redness from the ham and it only seeped into the fat that came out, which we strain out anyway. The broth underneath is regular colored. Okay.
The meat is actually like edible, but because we pretty much got everything we can out of it, like there's not gonna be much flavor to it. Um, as you can see, like clear off the bone and the bones themselves, like when I say we got everything out of this, like we got everything out of this. Um, yeah, maybe we'll give you a little something though. At this stage, you can actually skim off that layer of fat if you choose, which I will do that now. And like you just let that float to the top and this thing is really kind of fun. You just squeeze and it kind of like, I call this the soup poop <laughs> because it keeps the soup that you want because the oil rises to the top and then you can just like save the soup and the broth and like bring that to the bottom. And then you just keep doing it until all the fat has been separated. If you want, it's not, I mean, I think we vilify fat too much. Um, it's a really good way of like helping you feel full. So I wouldn't be overzealous about like taking the fat out of the broth here. Cause a little bit will help your broth feel all the more satisfying and rich. Obviously we didn't need like this layer of it in here, but just a little bit is okay. And if you really, really wanna like focus on taking it all out, one thing that you could do is just let this all cool, stick this in your freezer or refrigerator, and then it'll just like solidify in one large puck and you can just take it off. No, that was actually the perfect pot to use. I'm very proud of myself. So very simply, just using rinsed ginger or like you just ginger that you rub down a little bit. And we're gonna strain all of this out as well. So really we're just going for surface area to add in more delicate flavors from aromatics. We've got dried shrimp, not too much. As well as some, and some dried scallops. Oh, wait, spices too, sorry. Round it off with a little bit of warmth from star anise. Grassy eucalyptus notes from bay leaf. Uh, and I think that is gonna be good for me uh, because at the end of the day, this is still a base stock. You still want to be able to cook these things with, a, with like more stuff. So this is already a very versatile combination for the use of Chinese food. Um, this will give me a stock that is rich and delicious on its own, but you know, it'll be conducive to even more cooking later. So, some star anise. Bay leaf. Sure. And scallops. Oh, that smells really nice. Okay. So these will just go in here and we'll simmer this for like 30 minutes. Now you might think this is a lot of work just for a stock, but just remember like this is a stock that makes everything you cook with it the best possible version of whatever it is you're cooking. So this is your secret ingredient. This is your signature. This is that thing that you add to whatever it is you're making that no one else can pinpoint exactly what it is you did to make it so good. And it kind of makes sense, right? Like the foundational thing to a lot of stuff is the stock. And if your stock is already like the magical part of everything else, it just makes everything else that much better as a result. That is kind of like the way of thinking behind 
superior stock. And actually, because of the pressure cooker and stuff, it wasn't that difficult to make. We've got about five more minutes on the aromatics in the stock, so I'm just gonna get started on this. For steamed eggs, it's pretty easy. Uh, if you don't really care about bubbles and stuff too much, all you really need to do is crack four eggs into a bowl and then mix in like one and a half, two cups of broth in with it. Um, or you can use water, but for the sake of this recipe, we're gonna use superior stock, because we just made some. And that is it, you steam for a few minutes. I've got a steamer set up right here, uh, ready to go. Well, not ready to go, it's not even, it's not steaming yet, but it will soon, you see. It, it'll, it'll be ready pretty soon. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna crack these eggs into this bowl. At least the, the shell was big, so that was easy enough. And just beat with a chopstick. We're trying to get as little bubbles in here as possible. Okay, stock should be ready now. We're gonna add a couple of ice cubes to this to cool it down because we don't want to add like hot stock into this. And since we're bringing it like straight from the pot, like, you know. Ice cubes in here to just bring it down a little. Well, that we didn't want that to happen though. There we go. Now, if you really wanted to be like a stickler for texture and stuff, you would pretty much take a spoon and you take out all the bubbles from this. You can take like this mixture, put it in this thing and then pour it back out and this will catch all the bubbles from it or you could just use it right now to just scoop out the bubbles themselves. They don't really do much. It's more for an aesthetic thing. Like I, when I cook these for myself, I don't really bother doing this. It just makes it so that it's like nice and uniform and pretty. So at this point, you take this. Out. Where's my platey grabby thingy? Here we go. This guy. In. And you put it in here for like a few minutes. I think. I want to say eight minutes. I should probably check. I'm going to check. It is eight minutes, but I wanted to check with, <laughs> I checked with Made With Lao because I trust him over everyone else. If Daddy Lao says it's eight minutes, it's eight minutes. <laughs> so we're just going to leave that. I think that took me about like a minute to check. So set a timer for six and a half minutes. Six minutes. So we'll just sit tight for that. Well, we can prepare everything else in the meantime. Oh, we need to strain this out. No, we'll, we'll cut those later. We'll strain out this, the, the broth real quick. I forgot, this was like the whole point of the video. I got really excited for the eggs, but you yeah, know, we got to get the shrimps and the scallops out before it makes it too fishy, which is fine. I gave us plenty of time.
I don't know why I didn't do that first or to begin with, but that was much easier. And look at that, we have a beautiful vat of superior stock. You can use these for whatever it is you want. Um, base for sauces, base for soups, uh, the best steamed eggs you're ever gonna have. Yeah, I use this in a lot of different recipes, but mostly like anything you wanna make just a little bit more impressive, a little bit more delicious, and a little bit more special. Now, let's finish those eggs. Dark soy sauce. I'm gonna peek. I'm not, I'm not supposed to peek, but I'm gonna peek. I peek. It's good. Let's test for doneness. It should jiggle. Oh, it needs a little bit more time. We're gonna need a, a couple more minutes. We're so close though. So, give it two more minutes. So, whether or not it's ready, I'm impatient. So I'm just gonna just do it. Um, it looks fine. We'll see. It's a little bit deeper of a bowl than I probably should have used, but it's also a pretty bowl. So let's just go with it. Um, platey grabby thing, please don't drop this. Oh my God. That's exactly what it's doing. Here we go, here we go. Oh. Ah, okay. There we go. Okay, we're good, we're good. I really should spend more than like 50 cents on tools. I was more worried about like losing the egg custard than I was dropping my hand in some like <laughs> boiling water. Mochi. Never mind. All right, so a little bit of scallions. Oh, beautiful and just, I always love dark soy sauce with my eggs. So I'm just gonna do a couple of drops of this. There we go. And this is definitely best eaten over rice, but let's just see. Oh. Yes. See, okay, the perfect, silky, custardy egg. See how it tastes with the superior sock. Oh yeah. It's got like that porky pungent flavor. I think the extra collagen from the stock itself definitely helped with the texture. I mean, it's, it's a custard, so it does dissolve in your mouth, but this is like one of my favorite things to eat just with a bowl of rice because it just seeps into the rice and the individual grains get coated. Also, as you can tell, very, very healthy as I didn't add any extra besides the soy sauce right here, any extra salt. Mi mochi, shush. <laughs> also very healthy um, because this literally is just four eggs, a splash of dark soy sauce and broth. Um, and very nutritious and very nutritious broth to boot. So yeah, I will show you what this looks like with some rice. So you have your bowl of rice here. Um, you take a little bit of rice and then you take a little bit of your custard and then you just eat them together. And this is the perfect bite. It's gonna be soft. The rice is cooked well, so it's chewy. Mm -mm. Mm-hmm. And it's so comforting. Superior stock, steamed eggs. Like and subscribe.